Hey everyone, it's Julio Ramon here at ICANN and you are watching part two of our setup video on the Remote Air Pro. So first, let's talk about the hand controller and I'll give you a quick tour on all the features and all the functions that it has. Now, the controller is meant to be gripped by your left hand and it allows your right hand to pull focus with the knob. The knob has a nice rubber texture feel and it also comes with a glow-in-the-dark marking ring that you can use when you're in low light conditions. Next, you will see on the top we have the antenna port. We have another button labeled auto which is used to calibrate your lens and on the bottom we have the power button, the on off button and it also allows you to change wireless channels on the hand control unit. Now on the back you will see we have our pressure sensitive zoom rocker switch so when you grip it your finger curls around and gets a nice comfortable feel, nice comfortable control over your zoom channel. Now on the side here in the middle you will see we have a screen. This screen matches the one that we have on our receiver motor. So the data, the information that you see on the receiver motor will match the hand control unit here on the back. And finally we have an LED indicator light here located on the bottom. Now, when we power this device on by pressing and holding the power button on top, you will notice that the data screen on the back turns on. And now you can see all the information that matches your receiver motor. The indicator light here on the bottom has turned red. And red simply means that your device is powered on. That's it. Now, this LED light will change colors. When we attach it to our mobile device, the LED light will turn green. When the LED indicator light has turned purple, it means that you are charging your device. And the way you charge it, you have this USB to 4-pin LIMO connector. And on the bottom here is your 5-volt in port. You simply plug that in. And on the other end, you have your wall adapter. And you simply plug it in to charge. So when you're charging, this light will turn purple. And finally, when you're charging the controller and you have your mobile device connected to it, the indicator light will turn into cyan. So there you have four different colors. You have red, green, purple, cyan. And those are the four indicator lights. And we'll move forward. Now the Remote Air Pro is designed to work with your iPhone or iPod Touch. You can use it with the iPhone 6, 6S, 7, and you can even use them with each one of those models in the plus size version. As you can see here, we have three different mounts that we have. One for the iPod Touch, one for the standard 6 and 6S, 7 size, and then the last one for the plus sizes of those phones. Now just because the Remote Air Pro works with an iPhone does not mean that we actually need one in order to operate. Now I'm going to show you how to use the Remote Air Pro first without an iOS device. So let's get started. Now I already powered it on and I did that by simply pressing and holding the power button here. We have data on our screen, we have the red light on the power indicator, we're on. Next what I want to do is I want to attach one of the antennas to the antenna port, get it on top. Now the only thing we have left to do is we need to connect the controller to the motors that we have set up here on our rig. As you can see here on the receiver motor we already have power running to it and we have the data and information that we need on the screen. Now on the screen it indicates that this receiver motor is set to channel 20. So what I need to do is I need to match the controller to match channel 20. Now, if we look here, we are currently set to channel 16. So the way to change channels is we have to press the on off channel button once. By tapping it once, we jump up a channel. 
we go from 16, 17, 18, and so on and so on. We have a total of 20 different channels to work with and you cycle through them by pressing the channel button on top. So right now we're on 16. I'm going to press the button. 1, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Now right below where it says what channel we're on, you will see signal level. Now if that's zero, that means you don't have a signal currently flowing from the controller to the receiver. But in our case, we have numbers and they're fluctuating, which means we have a signal going back and forth and the receiver motor is communicating with the controller. So next, what we have to do is we have to calibrate the motors to the lens to get our controller to work. So in order to do that, what we have to do is we have to press and hold the auto button located on top of the controller. So we will press and hold and let the motors calibrate our lens. And after just a couple of seconds, we're done. The controller is now ready and operational and we're ready to pull focus. As you can see, we have control over our focus and through the switch on the back, we can control our zoom. Now the only channel that we do not have control over is the iris because the iris needs to be controlled through the app on your phone. But if you only need to pull focus and you only need to control the zoom, you don't actually need the app in order for that to work. One last feature that I want to show you is that you actually have the ability to set A and B hard stops without using your iPhone. Now, in order to do that, you simply use the hand controller and you use the auto button that is located on top. Now, let's, let me show you an example on how to set this up. Looking at the lens, let's say we want to set our A and B hard stops between four feet and 10 feet. So to do that, what we need to do is we need to line up our lens to four feet. Once we're at four, what we do from here is we press the auto button once. So press it. By pressing it, we have set four feet to be our A stop. Now we need to go set our B. So now we will turn the lens, line up on 10. And once we're on 10, we will press the auto button again once more. And there we go. We have set our A and B hard stops. Now the Remote Air Pro will only operate between four and 10 feet. Now, as you see, you still get full range on the focus knob. The focus knob actually remaps itself just to work between four and 10 or any A and B hard stop that you set. So this is a great feature. It's quick and easy. And to remove it, if you want to go back to normal, you simply press the auto button again once more, press it once, and now your lens has reset and you now have full control over the entire range. So those are all the features that you have available with the Remote Air Pro when you're not using your mobile device. Now, when you attach your iPhone to the controller, you unlock a lot more features and a lot more functionality. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take this iPhone 6S Plus and we are going to attach it to the controller. Now, what we have to do is we have to choose the correct mount. So here we have iPod Touch, we don't need that one. We have the iPhone 6S, we don't need that one. We need this thin one here that is designed for the plus size phones. So this mounting bracket here attaches to the controller using these two holes here located on the side of the knob. Now, what we do is we will take the mount, line it up into those holes. Now, when we turn it around, you will see two silver knobs on each side. Now what these knobs do is they loosen and they tighten the mount, you know, so you can secure your phone or take it out when you need to. So when we turn these knobs to my left, we will actually tighten it in place. So we will turn it to my left 
And if you turn to your right, you'll loosen it and you can take the mount out. So right now we are just going to tighten that down, get it started, but we still want to keep it loose enough so we can slide in our phone. I'm just going to go ahead and tighten it down a little bit, but keep it loose. That's good. Okay, next I'm going to grab the iPhone, line it up, and slide it into the mount. And there we go. Now we will tighten the mount down enough so where it's nice and snug. And as you can see, it's pretty snug. It's not going to fall out. So it's nice, safe, secure. Now one important feature that the Remote Air Pro has is that the controller actually has the ability to charge your iPhone. So looking at our iPhone, I can see that I'm currently at 25%. I need to keep this thing charged so we can keep operating. So to keep it charged, we will take this cable that comes included. It's a USB to lightning cable. It has a nice short length. And what we will do is we will take this cable and plug it in to the USB port on the bottom of the controller. So we will plug that in and then we will take the lightning cable side and we will plug it into the lightning port on our phone. And there you go. Our phone is now receiving a charge from the controller and it's going to keep our device charge running and keeping this going. And we will be able to use this for a long period of time. One last thing that I want to show you is that you'll notice on the bottom of the controller you have a quarter 20 hole that we will use to attach our lanyard here that has a quarter 20 screw located on the bottom. So we will attach that, rotate in, and now we are all set. So you can take this, throw it around your neck, and you're ready. So there we go, we're all set up and we're ready to operate. Stick around for our next video where we take a close look at the Remote Air Pro app and we go look at all the features and all the functions that you have to fully maximize the use of your Remote Air Pro. My name is Julio Ramon, here at ICANN, thanks for watching.